I knew that at some point we would see a Hearts of Iron 4 mod or expansion that would introduce a World War 1 scenario. And now we have a fantastic mod, the creators really deserve a ton of credit here. And we're going to do an AI only battle and see who wins in Hearts of Iron 4. So this will be kind of a shorter series because we'll be starting off in 1914. So the first world war should take place within the next couple months. Uh, I think it got started in September. So uh, we can expect to see that. We already have all of the factions laid down. Um, the Entente, which I guess I'm just going to refer to them as the Allies. Not sure exactly if that's a French word or what is that, but uh, I'm going to call them the Allies. And of course we have the Central Powers. This is not as ideological based as uh, Hearts of Iron 4 and World War 2 was. Uh, so like the ideologies of each country aren't really going to matter as much. Uh, this stuff, communists, fascists, maybe if we were to press way, way, way forward down the line, maybe the, the party ideologies would, would become a, a bigger deal, but I don't think for the most part it will. Uh, so the Ottomans will be uh, cozying up, or I guess the Austrians should be cozying up to the, Aus the Ottomans, um, and we should be seeing a lot of chaos take place, obviously. The Ottomans, I think, will take a few months into the war before they get into it. But if the Austrians and the Germans want to have a chance, they they absolutely need the Ottoman the Ottoman Empire because because uh, Russia is going to be, you know, a tough foe. Not so much in the very beginning. I mean, it's really it's really going to depend a lot on Russia because uh, France has this awesome awesome fort. Uh, these these lines here is it still like the fort defense? Again, this mod really kind of overhauls so many of the base mechanics in Hearts of Iron 4. It's kind of incredible that, you know, all the things that they were able to do. Like, if we were to look as France, like, everybody has a whole new set of national focus trees. Um, you know, there's kind of the default where we're going to see a lot of uh, kind of the naval stuff over here, the, the air and, and the army enforcements over this way. But everyone has, like, a pretty unique... Ooh, see, there we go. Prepare for war. Um... Plus, uh, what is that, 100,000 manpower. So France is gearing up for the war. Uh, Germany has some very interesting choices as well. Uh, because it's 1914, we've already gone through a little bit of the national focus tree. Uh, and then maybe if you guys like this series, I will uh, I will start again in the 1910 start, which will obviously lead to a little bit, you know, different results. Um, I'm not going to do any sort of picks. Like, I mean, well, we will do a pick. Uh, if you guys want to leave your comments in the section below, just let me know what faction you think is going to win, Central Powers or the Allies. Uh, I don't I don't think I'm going to do like any sort of uh, winner because it, there's going to be way too many comments. Someone There's going to be a ton of people that get it right. So, uh, But it's still kind of nice to see. It'd be nice to see who you guys uh, pick and uh, just to kind of so that, you know, by the end of the series, you'd be like, yeah, I picked right. Uh, for me, hey man, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking Central Powers here because... It, it really depends. You know, who knows what Italy... You know, Italy could go... They're more than likely going to go with the Allies, but I have non-historical focus on, which means that, yeah, they uh, they might they might not. They they might just stay out of the war altogether, all which would be really, really helpful for someone like Austria. So the war has already began. Um, I don't think... Yeah, so here here's the, uh, the beginning part. The, the Ottomans aren't involved, but there is an alliance already. Uh, this is the problem. The Ottomans don't like Greece and Italy. Uh, right now, the Germans and the Austrians don't have an opinion, an opinion on on Italy. So here goes Belgium. Yep, I figured that. I figured that more than likely the Netherlands will stay completely out of the war, and uh, and here we go. Wow, Luxembourg's already gone. <laughs> uh, so the war looks like it got kicked off a little bit sooner. I think I, I, I like I said, I thought it starts in September, but um, okay, I guess not. Uh, Romania might join in on the Allies as they did historically. Um, Probably within the first few years of the war. We can actually kind of check on their opinion. Yeah, so they really do not like Austria-Hungary. Uh, I wonder if I should just shorten their name. A-A-H? Should I just A-H them? Okay, so let's obviously view as the Germans and the Austrians. Uh, let's kind of see what's going on in these two empires. So we've got Germany already at 4.14 manpower. Um, I know the Russians start off with pretty low amount of manpower. 4.1... 4417. I'm sorry, 4.7. I don't know why I got so conf confused by uh, by numbers there. Yeah, so Russia actually starts this scenario off with pretty low manpower. Um, they, yeah, they, they really don't have, look at that recruitable. Like, they don't really have much uh, recruitable population either, which is kind of scary for Russia. This is going to be the key, I think. I think Russia is uh, is the deciding factor. I think they're one of the, probably the most important country in World War One. Because uh, more than likely France will hold its front. Like, that's that's fine. Uh, but if Russia falls and you leave, you know, Austria and Germany 
with only, you know, the Western Europeans, I, I don't see how how they're going to be able to stop them without the help of the United States. And I don't always know. I've played this scenario out a few times. The U.S. does not always join in. Uh, sometimes they just stay out of the affairs of Europe uh, as they as they wanted to historically. But, you know, they might, they might, of course, join in too. Who knows? If Russia falls, though, we, uh, yeah, I think that it might be safe to say at that point the Central Powers will more than likely win. Uh, again, Russia will probably go through a civil war. The Soviets will rise up. And, um, hey, if the Central Powers can maybe use that to their, to their benefit, then who knows what will happen. Okay, so let's see how Austria combats against, who is this, Serbia, right? Yep, Serbia and uh, Montenegro. Let's kind of view in here as Austria and see what exactly is going down. So it looks like more than likely Austria should be able to roll over these kind of smaller countries. It's already October. Um, if we zoom out, we can kind of get a better idea of, of number-wise... It's actually still kind of tough because we have all these little battles taking place. Clearly, though, uh, it looks like the Austrians are trying to move in because uh, the, the the pointer here they're not they're not doing a very good job. I think that there there are a significant amount of what mountains here. There's forests, so the train is kind of keeping it a little bit rougher for Austria. They're going to have a tough time. Not going to have the easiest of times. Uh, what about going? What's going on in the Russian front? It seems like they're having a lot more success here. Although the AI is not really pushing forward. They might be just gearing up. It seems like Russia's doing a lot of their, a lot of the movement. I love the fact that we've got all the general pictures here. I don't know if they're accurate general pictures, but uh, we also have like the leaders. So we have Franz uh, Joseph the first, apparently. We've got Germany. Uh, Will Wilhelm Helm, right? Is that how you pronounce it? I believe so. Oh, Germany's kicking butt. Look at that. Oh, they're moving in hardcore. As 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 they did. Uh, Germany and Austria should get off to a really good start against Russia. Russia does not have a very good, uh, very, very nice starting position at all. Uh, who leads Nik Nikol Nikolai to the second? Something like that. I do kind of want to see how the AI manages this. So they've got 126 regiments along the front. They're, they're trying to get the front lines up and running, but it seems like there's a lot of, there's a lot of still, still organization that's taking place. Uh, Russia's improving their relations with Romania. That is a big, big deal for Russia. They they got to get Romania on their side. More than likely they will. Again, nothing super unhistorical should happen. Only because even though I don't have historical focuses on, uh, it should still somewhat play out as World War One did. How are the Ottomans doing? Ottomans are just chilling. Ottomans doing their thing. Just chilling, chilling. Uh, still don't like Italy. Still don't like Greece. How about the relationship with Russia? Russia, of course, likes Serbia. They like Montenegro. Although, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Bosnia. Bosnia. I don't know why. <laughs> I clicked on the uh, the state name, and I think that's why, yeah, Austria-Hungary is at war. That's why I think I got confused. Oh, oh never mind. No, I'm not confused. I, I had it right. It's just Bosnia fell, like, pretty fast. Didn't even notice that. So we're at 31 world tension. If we look at the current wars, there's really only one, and it's actually divided into two. So we've got the Austrian-Hungarian War. We're no longer getting effects from uh, building dreadnoughts. Who is this? Oh, the Ottoman Empire. Okay. So that probably keeps them out of the war a little for, for a little bit. So you have Austria-Hungary going after Serbia. Then we have Germany going after Belgium. And then that's where like a lot of the, the Western Europeans are coming into it. Mongolia even actually that's right because Mongolia I think is I don't know if they're a puppet or they they're they're definitely doing what Russia wants them to do People's Republic of China now I don't believe the Eastern Asian countries should get involved if we press the series further enough far enough then yeah they could they could actually have a pretty interesting game here but um yeah I think that China and Japan might do something interesting if we were to wait till after the war not exactly sure how, how we're gonna how we're going to do with that. Uh, obviously, if the Central Powers were to somehow, incredibly, which I don't think they can, like I said in this scenario, but if they could get China and Japan in, in, involved, uh, that would be super ideal for them. Heavy industry. So Japan's doing their thing. All right, so Austria's having a great time so far, and I think that's what we'll see. I think uh, it was Germany that pushed furthest, furthest into Russia. I think that in just in this scenario here, the way the AI works, I think Austria will be doing it for the central powers for the most part. Yeah, I mean, you, you, I'm seeing a lot of greens here. They're, they're having, they're having a ton, tons and tons of success, it seems like. 
What might be also kind of interesting is looking at the uh, the air map mode and how how much of an impact this actually has in a World War One scenario. In World War Two, well, I don't know. In Hearts of Iron Four, in general, even though it's a World War Two scenario, air doesn't have as much of an impact as you would think it it should. Um, but I'm guessing in World War One in this mod, it should have even less of an impact. I, I don't I don't exactly know. I I don't think that. It would be causing all i mean even if you so even if germany doesn't have air superiority right here i don't know if that's really going to affect the, the ground troops it, clearly it's not because if we look at if we look at all these green bubbles here there is uh there's a lot of success taking place let's look at their logistics for a second because germany is going to be is going to kind of fuel the central powers uh obviously if the central powers were to lose it's going to be Germany that's going to be the last country standing. It, Austria would fall first and all the other, you know, the Ottomans would fall next. Germany would stay, I think, uh, pretty strong. Oh my goodness. I did not realize that France was pushing that far forward. You better watch it there, Germany. So I've not seen something like this happen before. Where uh, Germany quite quickly loses a lot of strength. Wow, what happened? How did they let this fall? Uh, there, there's a, there's a handful of, there's, there's some trenches and some land forts here. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Oh, you messed up. You had some trenches here, and you just let them get past you. So what Germany's gonna have to do is they're probably gonna have to leave the Russian front, focus on stopping France. Ooh, you better watch it, because if Italy gets involved, then, uh, then Austria is really screwed. Yeah, so the Ottomans are involved in this alliance, but Bulgaria and the Ottomans haven't yet decided to join the war. They're, they're still chilling. They're still chilling. Now, maybe the reason why France is, is having such a good time against Germany is because we're seeing, you know, Russia not do so well. Maybe, maybe them pressing forward. Because it's not just Austrian troops here. I mean, we've got five divisions of, uh, of Germans. 20... Yeah, I mean, number-wise, they are completely outnumbering Russia. Yeah, if we look at the Russians, I mean, they've got, like, what, 18 divisions versus possibly 30? It, it goes back and forth, and we're going to see that continue to happen. Look at all these garrison troops, dude. Get your garrison troops off the garrison and send them to the front lines, man. You're not going to have a good time if you if you don't figure that out. Okay, so we're seeing kind of a push forward from Russia. Either they're going to get cut off, which they might. It looks like there's a few battles being won here. You're, you might get encircled. Oh, that's going to be bad. Especially for the already lacking Russian manpower. They're at 76 factories. Not sure exactly how factories are going to... Oh my gosh. We've, 76 factories versus Germany's 101. Austria at 100... Or 86 is... 86. Um... Of course, the British should have, like, huge naval dominance, as they as they usually do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they completely control this. Ottoman have... Uh-oh, there it is, right there. Ottoman Empire has called to jazz as the enemy of the uh, German-Bulgarian War. So, there it is. So, the Ottomans have joined in. This is, this is, this is good. Although France is pushing into Western Germany, uh, at least you have now the Ottomans going to help you out in the, uh, the Russian front. Of course, though, I mean, the Ottomans have to worry about the United Kingdom here in Egypt. Uh, they've got Hejaz involved. Is Hejaz like a puppet or something? Not sure. Party ideology there, completely authoritarian. Democratic. Oh, most of these countries are... Uh, that's right. I'm sorry. Most of these countries are completely authoritarian. I, I lost that. Wondering how many factories Germany has lost since they lost this huge chunk of land. Had to have lost a little bit. Well, at least what they did is they, they kept... Essentially what France was able to do is they kept Belgium safe. So, they... they Belgium will, will still exist. Usually Germany is able to kind of move through Belgium quite easily and just kind of roll over that whole region. Alright, let's, let's view back as Austria. Really liking what we're seeing on this Russian front. Here's Minsk, which is going to be... That's 20 VPs right there. In order to take down Russia, you got to get to Moscow, though. So they're they're going to need to go... Oh, you know what? That's right. Petersburg. Is that St. Petersburg? Is that what that's supposed to... Is that like a different name? 
Is the game trying to confuse me? Is this mod trying to <laughs> confuse Drew? Uh, I don't need, you guys know, I don't need any more confusion. That's definitely not what I need. I'm surprised that uh, Austria hasn't been able to completely wipe out Serbia just yet. I mean, they're they're actually losing a lot of these. Uh, it looks like they're they're losing a lot of these conflicts here. Serbia pushing forward, if anything. That's kind of what it's feeling like. Uh, I I think that they've got a handle on the French. Seems like they they're holding back. I mean, the French are trying to push forward, but looks like they're they're winning a lot of these uh, defensive combats combats that are taking place combat thingies. So yeah, uh, in the in the other possible ways that World War One could have played out, I mean, in the in this national focus tree, there's tons of, like there's the Franco-German friendship. That is a possibility. Um, there's there's a lot of kind of cool things. This is where I think the AI is going for next. Is at war with France. Invalid effect. That's right. There's there's a ton there's tons of events that this mod introduces, which is uh, which is nice. Looks like you can go early fascist here. Is that what I just saw? Uh, democratism focus or I'm sorry I thought that was fascism I, I'm confused support Italy or they could support Austria Hungary there's a ton of other ways that a scenario like this could play out yeah so I mean now you've got an Austria that is kind of uh, engulfed around Romania too so when Romania does join in which more than likely they will I don't know about soon but they eventually will they will not be supported by the Russians it's kind of the two things happening. I haven't seen this happen before, which is kind of interesting. Where Russia gets off to a bad start, but France gets off to a good start. So we'll see how this plays out, but I'm going to stop right there. Uh, again, let me know in the comment section down below. Who do you, what what uh, what faction do you think will win? And um, I think, yeah, I think what, what faction do you think will win? Will Russia fall? Because the Soviets will rise up. And I'm wondering if we have like a countdown on that or something. If there's like some way we can... Uh, we can view that. United Kingdom has called in, uh, uh oh, boom, Jer Japan has called in Korea. Oh, now you're real screwed. I mean, they're not going to make much of a difference, so it's, uh, it's really, that, that's, I mean, I guess they could help out Russia a little bit more, but, but we'll have to wait and see. So as I said, this should be kind of a short series, but I, I think pretty quick, punchy, fast, entertaining, um, and we'll see what happens. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.